Here's a handy little item that will make your station possibly more tidier, possibly more efficient. It's not fashionable, it'll last a lifetime. Hello and thank you for joining me once again on uh, this video channel. I'm going to talk about coax switches today. A very simple item, a simple accessory, an accessory that many of you may already have, but uh, some of you may not, and uh, perhaps you haven't thought it through quite how useful a coax switch would be. Perhaps you've mistrusted them, perhaps you thought the construction inside was not very good. Because I can remember coax switches many years ago and inside was a conventional switch with bits of wire coming from the uh, sockets on the exterior of the switch and thinking gosh it might be okay on 160 meters and 80 meters but how would it be on the higher frequency bands and even forget VHF well since those days switches have come on quite a lot in design and we we do what I would call a a budget range of kite switches. They're not the cheapest, but they are, I think, probably the best value for money. And these switches are really nicely made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the switch um, that I'm talking about, or the range of switches I'm talking about. We'll have a peek inside, see how it works, and then consider how we might use these switches in our station. So let's have a look at uh, the good old coax switch but a modern update and a well-engineered version. Now if I remove the back plate you can see here the switch is very simple indeed it's built into a nice die cast case and you can see that the changeover is very simple it's a, like a sort of a brass um, finger that goes from one side to the other it makes very positive contact you can see the way it's tensioned there and uh, it's a nicely finished unit with a smart switch on the front panel. I then thought I'd take a look at the back of the four-way switch, but unfortunately I couldn't really get into it. You can just, I think, see the finger moving behind the plate, but I didn't really want to strip it down any further um, because I didn't have the facilities. So how can we use a coax switch? Well, of course, there's many ways you can use a coax switch. It's designed to switch coax cable in whatever application uh, you might be using. But one of the most obvious is in an HF transceiver. Most HF transceivers, certainly the budget ones rather, have only a single antenna output and a lot of operators have more than one HF antenna. Now, you can swap the antenna cables over just by unplugging it at the back of the radio and plugging the other one in. Well, it's not as fast as sometimes you would wish and certainly plugging cables in and out tend to cause problems with the connectors eventually because there's a lot of bending of the cable and uh, particularly the braid can become unseated on the, on the plug unless of course you've connected it very very well not everybody does but there's also the application where you want to quickly switch from one antenna to the other and I do that a lot with between a vertical and a horizontal antenna there's nothing like being able to switch it very very quickly to just check the, the performance of the two antennas. When I use a coax switch, I very often put a VSWR meter between the transceiver and the input to the coax switch. That means to say I've always got a VSWR meter in circuit. Now you might say, well, there's one built into the transceiver. Well, very often you use the internal ATU on your, in your transceiver to get the best VSWR. So the meter in your transceiver will read a very good match, but it's quite handy to actually monitor what the real VSWR is beyond the ATU in your transceiver. So one setup I frequently use is having a two-way coax switch. The output of the transceiver goes into the VSWR meter, the VSWR meter goes into the coax switch, and then I've got two antennas. Well, very often I've used a three-way coax switch. 
I've still got my two antennas, but I add a dummy load to the third output of the coax switch. Now, talking about coax switches, it's difficult to decide what is input and what's out. But I regard the single pole input, the single connector as the input, and the other two or three or even four um, uh, sockets as the outputs. So you could have a, a system whereby you've got two HF antennas going into your coax switch. You've also got a dummy load. Then the input from the from the transceiver can be switched between the two antennas and also to the dummy load. And the dummy load is very handy if you want to set up your transceiver, set up the mic gain, um, monitor the ALC, monitor the compression without causing interference on the band. So a three-way coax switch can be quite a useful device. Likewise, the power rating is very generous. You're not going to damage the switch uh, if you're using any UK uh, power ratings. The only thing I would say is always make sure that when you, you, when you change the coax switch over, you're not transmitting. It's when you're transmitting and you switch the switch over that you can cause some problems because there's inevitably going to be some arcing, not to mention the fact that it won't be too good for your transceiver. So don't switch the coax switch over when you're transmitting if that indeed that coax switch is in the transmit uh, HF uh, feed point because you could cause some problems. Now, of course coax switches don't have to be used entirely for 50 ohm coax. I have in the past used uh, a coax switch to switch a mic line. Um, it works quite happily. I know the impedance is wrong but that doesn't really matter uh, or audio frequencies. And I've used it to switch a mic from one transceiver to another. So there's all sorts of things. And of course, if you're testing, you've got test equipment, you can use coax switches for testing. The range that uh, I'm talking about here, the, the Watson range, they have um, uh, models for uh, SO239 or N-type, so you're, you're, you're well catered for. As regards reliability, they're extremely reliable. The switching is very simple, very basic, and there's really not much to go wrong. And we hardly ever get one of these coax switches back um, with a problem. The only time we get one back, and that's very occasionally, is when it's badly arced over because somebody's tried to switch the coax line while they're transmitting. It doesn't do the switch much good at all. And so they are nicely made. And for what you get, I think it's, uh, you know, it's not an unreasonable price compared with some other coax switches. Anyway, as usual, of course, you're the customer, you make up your own mind. But I hope it's given you an insight into the coax switch, or at least these coax switches, how they're made. And also we've discussed very briefly how they can be used in a typical ham radio station. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a new visitor to this channel. And until the next time, take care. See you in the next video.